Oh, finally. Architecture I know and understand. Server architecture. Morning all. Once again, thank you for tuning in. On the mobile workbench today, we have a Dell PowerEdge 1850 1U rack server. A very sad, sick and sorry PowerEdge 1850. The fault? It won't power up. The reason? Well, this is how they gave me the power supply. There's supposed to be a terminal block with heat shrink over it, which I think is a thermo couple. No screws. The pins on the edge of the AC input have broken off, and there's burning around this relay. I don't think the camera can pick it up. I thought it was dirt, but it's burning. The power supply's clearly gotten very hot. I thought that was dirt, but that's all burnt. And same with that's all burnt. And that lines up with this capacitor. So this won't be a uh, won't be able to turn this on. So this will obviously be a non-power up profile of this server, but that won't dis stop us discussing it. Obviously, pretty much this is a stock standard setup for this. Um, as you can probably tell, it hasn't got an optical or floppy disk. They would go in there. That would be your optical, and over here would be your floppy disk. Um, the few I've worked on over the years haven't had them. So what you'd end up having to do is use your USBs where you're using uh, USB keys or USB optical drives. One thing I think that may have caused problems with this, you can see here there's some rust on the edge of the fan grill. And look at that. I'm wondering if the power supply issues are because it's ingested some moisture. And we'll have a look once we open it up. On the front, pretty standard for Dell. We have our power button, two NICs, NMI, our VGA, uh, two USBs, info location, and error and warning LED. Let's have a look at the back. I've worked on a lot of these servers over the years, specifically this one I've been looking after for about eight years, seven or eight years. One thing I could never understand was the fact that the power supplies were inset from the overall length of the unit. Last time this was in, which was for RAM, which I'll discuss later on in this video, this had two power supplies in it. Now it's got none. I reckon they've waited till both power supplies have shit themselves before they've brought it over to me to have a look at. This would be where your two PCI cards would go. I don't know what's happened to the blanking plate on that one. The only other qualm I have with these is when you've got fat fingers like mine, getting into the IOs is very difficult. Because they're actually inset further than the PCI slots, which is inset further than the overall length of the unit. In there is our DB9 serial, our VGA, our two PS2s. Set even further back, which is the reason you've got these two little levers, are the two NICs, one and two, and then our two USBs. Let's have a look inside. You know, I'm often asked why I prefer to work on rack-mounted servers than any other type of servers, and I think it's pretty much damn well clear. Everything's just so accessible. Makes it very easy to find things and fix them. As I said, this was bought second hand, which we'll discuss later. Up the front, we have our I.O. system. This would be where your floppy disk would go, obviously, with its flat flex um, data and power lead. Our blowers. We have our CD-ROM connector, which would connect into here using an uh, embedded power and data IDE lead. Our power regulation. This unit has two Intel dual-core Xeon 3 gig processors. RAM. Now, the second time this came in, this is the third time the unit's been in, but the second time was for RAM. Uh, they bought it with only 3 gig. Uh, they wanted four gigs, so I put in two two fifty or two five hundred meg sticks in it. 
and the SCSI case RAM was only 64 meg I blew that out to 256 meg have a clock battery we have our baseboard management or DRAC connector um, this is the RAID key uh, I'll explain that later let's have a look at the riser card get the riser card out it's pretty damn easy with this you just got one of those and one of those and out, out she comes so this is the riser we have our LSI logic uh, chip I can't actually remember what's under these I, 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 I lose track of what's under all these heat sinks this is the riser card anyway we have a PCI X slot there and you can just see one there we have our intrusion detection button SCSI data lead and our SCSI battery and I think I can get this out one handed I'm trying to hold the camera and get, get the riser out okay and there's the riser card with its connector down to there not much really on that that I can explain okay so that's it we have our I think this one's got the Intel Pro 1000 NIC in it and our ATI Radeon 8 meg graphics card the first time this came in um, I've, I've been looking after this for probably seven or eight years they bought it second hand um, not too long after they bought it one of the hard drives failed and this failed this is a RAID key that Dell use. This unit specifically has the PERC 3DI RAID controller on it. Without this you can't RAID. The BIOS won't let you RAID. Um, you can buy these but you've got to buy them for your PERC driver. Now I've dealt with everything from PERC 3DI all the way up to 6DI. Um, one of the PowerEdge 6850s that I'm bringing home um, to repair which powers up which I'll discuss with in another video I've had to replace the key on that too but this key originally died so we tracked down a second hand one put it in and it allows you to use the onboard RAID now if you're using a rated card like a you know an Adaptec card or a QLogic or LSI Logic RAID card an Intel RAID card you don't actually need this because obviously you'll run your hard drives over to the RAID card but using the onboard you need this so and you need to make sure that if this fails you know what SCSI controller you're using so you can re replace it with the right key and this just sits back into there like so so what can we use these servers for well there's a myriad of uses we can use them for um, this one specifically, they bought it, it was running a Linux mail server. They then went and replaced it with, I believe, a Linux mail appliance. I don't understand the new stuff. I, I struggle to keep up with it, actually. This then became a NAS server with uh, two 146 gigs drives in it in RAID 0. And I was using, I think it was free NAS I put on this originally. Um... Now the lucky thing is they've got a backup of all this, so depending on what they tend want to do with the power supply, um, at least they've got a backup of it. Firewalling, it does have two NICs. Uh, domain controller, uh, file server, just Windows file server or Linux file server. Um, they're great. I have seen them in a HPC environment, high performance computing, but I don't know how well they do. Um, I think for memory the RAM you can expand it up to 8 or 12 gig I think it may only be 6 or 8 gig um, so they're a pretty robust server they're very reliable um, this now is I think it's 10 years old and it's only just kicked the bucket now I know there's plenty of servers out there that have lasted a lot longer I've had a couple that have lasted me ages and the only reason that I've gotten rid of them was because I ended up getting better ones so that's the profile of the 1850 um the power supply i think well i don't tend to repair power supplies it's not that i don't know what i'm doing i just think it's easier just to go and buy one 
So I think what we'll do in this case is I'll just tell the customer that we'll just order a new one if they want to order it. Otherwise, I will uh, dispose of the hard drives securely, obviously. Anyway, that's the profile of the PowerEdge 1850. Again, apologies for a non-power-up. I have got some other servers ready to profile and power up that we can look at, which is good, and I'll be putting videos up of those shortly, plus a video of Untangled. And I'm going to show you why I love it and recommend it, because it is just such an easy bare metal firewall to configure, use, update, the whole lot. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe.